Yes, hope you're doing well. I've brought the SL down to a local car meet where people come and stand by their cars for far longer than would be deemed responsible adult behaviour. But it happens. And one of the great things about an event like this is it brings people together. And right now, there absolutely is not enough of that happening in the world. So, we're going to take a look around, we're going to check out some of the cars, see what's going on, hopefully chat to some of the owners and get their perspective and their views on their ownership experiences. It's F90, no, it's not where it's at. Wow, it's e my father. E39. Then this here, probably one of my favourite cars of the day, the E39 M5, which is a lovely lovely car in really good condition this is where it's at if you're going to go m5 this is where it's at and you might make a little bit of money on it as well such as the market for these at the moment and this one does it like it's in very good condition wheels looking good really very very nice wonderful and a 280 here probably one of the nuts capris to have back in the 80s one of the best you can have, I think, is the Tickford Capri, which is rarer than this. They go Ferrari 550 Maranello. No, not really. You know what it is. And here we have an RX-7. Wonderful bit of kit. 1984, this one. And, of course, the first thing you notice about this is the engine. It looks very small, and that's because it is a rotary engine in this. And, yeah, the actual block is tiny. I'm going to have to speak up because this music's just kicked off behind me. Carburetor, no injection, no turbo on this. Uh, but, really, the size of this engine is quite mind-blowing. So small, so compact. So, here with the owner, what's it actually like living with a C3 in the UK? Because you take one look at this and you think, it looks big. It looks impractical. Can you live with it on a day-to-day -day basis? Of course you can. You can? Of course you can. We've had it for 33 years now. Wow. So um, if you couldn't live with it, we wouldn't have it. We've got a second car, but we take it. This is our hobby. It's amazing. Any sort of things that you find especially difficult about ownership of this in the UK? Parts, for example, maybe? Yeah, just that when you leave it, you worry about it. Oh, right, yeah. okay. So the attachment is strong. Yes, very strong. <laughs> it's like another one of our children. Fantastic, but that is a long period of ownership, so kudos to you for looking after it Thank for such a long time. It looks like it's in wonderful condition, and these are just phenomenal cars, right? For me, this is still the best looking vet yeah, on the road, so. C3. I think so. Absolutely lovely. Well, thank you very much for your time, yeah, and you. keep on looking after it. We will. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. thank you. Check this lovely Jaguar XK. Absolutely beautiful bit of kit here, and that colour, that colour, look at that. Absolutely stunning. Really wonderful condition. Absolutely stunning. EV, yay. 996, 996, representing. <laughs> and if you're into being a London gangster, there's nothing you need more like, than a Granada 2.8 with corgis as well. Check this out. I used to be all over these as a kid, especially a 2.8. Sorry, come on, fine. Have a little video. Thank you. You won't see another one. Who owned it then? It belonged to the late Queen Elizabeth. Did it? Yes. It's her personal car. I'm informed that this did actually belong to HRH. <laughs> Elizabeth by the, the owner here, which is impressive. So this has some real heritage. Yeah. That is amazing. So what's the story? Do you mind if David let's let me just spin this round. So uh, what's the story behind this car? Because nice. that's quite a bit of history. Yeah, it's got the history because it belonged to the late Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Bought in 1984, came to me after 17 years because I was Princess Margaret's personal chauffeur. And I've had it ever since 25 years. That's impressive. We have a few extras, we have air conditioning which they did not come with. You see an AC on the dial yeah. there, yeah? We have rubber floor. I noticed this, it's like a, that's a school, school liner. Yes. Vinyl, yeah? yeah, that was put on <laughs> just in case you got any old smoke of cow muck in it. You could just throw a bucket of water in and wash it out. Wash it out. So, it out. so practicality was the yes. order of the day, right? Yeah, it was just a workhorse. It wasn't a luxury. Right. She had uh, a gun box and radio box. And she also had a thick swab for the corgis. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
So there's definitely been a corgi or two in here, Less right? Or six. Well, I really appreciate that. That is no one hell of a history, right? Thank you very much. Look after it. I'm sure I you will, will yeah. I will do. <laughs> Thank you yes. so much. My pleasure. Enjoy the show. Take care. Right, this year is definitely worth a mention. A Sierra RS Cosworth. And if you've been following motors at all recently, you'll know that these things are very sought after indeed. And we've been seeing some rather wonderful prices. And this thing here looks absolutely amazing in terms of just how original it is right down to having the original dealer sticker uh, that's what at least I think it is stuck in there probably a repo it looks like it but check it out really really wonderful condition placard sitting in the front as well dangling off that rear view mirror we have a 9-1 a, yeah, you do not see many of these on the road and we have those acid green calipers down there because it is of course a hybrid an absolutely bonkers hybrid at that Check that out. carbon fiber everywhere some of the widest tires we've ever seen if i can just get up there Obligatory SD1, Ferrari F430. No, it's not one of those. Incidentally, you can get now V12s of these for about 70, 80,000 pounds, maybe a bit cheaper if you do your shopping, which is a serious amount of car for your money and probably not going to depreciate too much more, fingers crossed. So if you're after a bargain right now, Get your lips around Advantage. With the owner talking about the RS Cosworth here and the differences between the RS Cosworth and of course the RS 500, which has massively pushed the values of these things yeah. up. But so yeah, run through if you can. So an extra set of injectors along along here. Right. But they weren't connected up as standard, I believe. Okay. Uh, bigger turbo, a T, T4 turbo. And that's already a big turbo. And this is a T3 turbo. T3. So the T4 is yeah. another, a bigger turbo. It had a bigger uh, intercooler down here and different bumper we had another scoop cut out here to let more air right through for the indicator it didn't come as standard with the the uh fog lights the fog lights were replaced by grills right to let more air into the brakes but the fog lights were supplied from you in a box in the boot right so, and what would you think this should command on a good day uh one sold yesterday at auction for 55 grand 55 so um, so somewhere around still filming so somewhere around that sort of value 55 yeah. 60 grand yeah we go back to the rs 500s i mean the, they had a different um splitter on the bottom to the black rubber. oh yeah i see yeah it had, it had a, a lip on it right yeah and now down here and then a lip on it size of that wastegate actuator as well much bigger than is on my Renault 5 that's for sure yeah. But yeah, lovely. It's amazing how much room there is in old engine bays, all right? Very just a simple engine compared to today's cars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank no you. Yeah. Fantastic. This here is lovely. I do love an XJS, and this is a stunning example. V12, absolutely gorgeous, kind of lemony beige leather interior. Really nice condition. Look at that. Lovely. Yeah, you know the sitcom, right? And this cigar is absolutely bonkers in this colour, but lovely, very rare these days. Keeping it real with that crazy TVR interior, it does so well. There's the door release under the mirror there. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Those pedals built for racing, nice. I'm informed this has done 141,000 miles, so it's due a rebuild. They're a bit more diverish, those rotary engines. It's had some stuff done to it. Either that or the suspension's collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think so. We've got a lovely TR8 here. Triumph TR8 with a uh, Rover engine in it. Uh, TR8 over here. And over here, we've got a TR7. And of course, the difference between the TR7 and the TR8 is the TR7 had seven engines, and the TR8 has got eight engines in it. Lovely XR2, really good condition. Look at this, absolutely lovely. Yeah, well done. A few more vets. Uh, we know which one I'd have, right? 
SL representation here, right? Lovely R107, really nice condition. It's for sale. Lovely colour on this one. And over here we have an SL600, also for sale. Uh, supposed to be appreciating, but it has gone down a little bit in value since the last time it was up. But you never know. 12 cylinders. Uh, and then over here, there's a lovely Daimler there. Daimler, of course, bought by Jaguar in 1960. Still use that name for many of their cars. You'll know this is, of course, an XJ. And then, yeah, the best car of the day here, which is, of course, this, the SL55 AMG. Really nice colour, great condition. You've probably seen this car before on the channel. I did have a little quiz going today to see if anyone could get this, and nobody did. It is, of course, the fact that the wheels, as you know, if you follow the channel, those wheels are powder coated now and they should be diamond cut. So we'll wrap this one up, I think. A huge thank you to everyone who contributed on camera. Really very much appreciated. Uh, it's been a good day. Stay safe, stay well. See you on the next one and bye for now.